Recent studies report that two-thirds of American physicians today report feeling burned out, something only aggravated by the pandemic. One of the consequences, a decline in the quality of care for patients who find it increasingly difficult to navigate the health care system. Fred DeSam Lazaro looks into one effort to improve on both scores. Because it is so important. I am here to say that life gets better. From her everyday musings. I try to be of the mindset that man is inherently good. To humorous glimpses of her healthcare journey. They need to make cuter hospital gowns. The L Pink's quirky, optimistic social media posts resonated with hundreds of thousands of her generation who became her followers. So I'm going to join my Zoom class looking like this. She graduated last year at 21 and at the top of her class at Hofstra University with a degree in community health. Congratulations, Leo. And with multiple awards that included a virtual ceremony just for her, one she took leave from a hospice bed to attend. Weeks later, Liel Pink would die from multiple complications of a rare mitochondrial disorder she'd struggled with through much of her three years in college. We don't know if she could have survived it if they had caught it early, but the, the process and the journey that she went through 100% should have been different. You can really see the difference in... <sighs> what happened to her. Liel's parents say their daughter was a poster case for what's wrong with America's healthcare system, enduring an uncoordinated journey from one provider to the next. Gastroenterology, cardiology, endocrinology. Many discounted her symptoms, each addressed just the issue within their specific expertise. A GI perspective, a neurologic perspective, um, a cardiac perspective, and it's almost impossible to get doctors to talk to each other. Liel was prescribed close to 200 different medications, a regimen she tracked meticulously. She created a 28-page spreadsheet with all the lab tests she'd had. She would have to tell doctors, you can't prescribe me that, and here are the reasons. She was assertive. And to have this 20 and 21-year-old telling a doc, you can't do this, they didn't appreciate it. They say Liel struggled to convince doctors that her various pain symptoms were real and that treatments she was being prescribed were not working. Mm ah went the little green frog one day. Mm ah went the little green frog. Instead, her parents say early in her healthcare ordeal, Liel's symptoms were attributed to mental health, the start of what her mother calls diagnostic momentum. This idea that once a doctor says what he or she thinks it is, Every other doctor is going to look at that as the starting point, and it's very hard to break from that. And she did have a few really exceptional doctors who said things like, medical science has not caught up to what is happening in your body. That was music to our ears. Liel's parents don't name names. They have no plans to sue any provider or hospital system. Tamar Fenton and David Pink say they just want to use their daughter's experience to improve a healthcare system which they say is uncoordinated and ill-equipped to deal with complicated cases like Liel's. They are part of an initiative called the Patient Revolution, Hello. begun by Mayo Clinic endocrinologist Victor Montori. This, this form of healthcare is not humanly sustainable for the patients and clinicians that are showing up to care within it. So we need to go to the root cause of that. The root cause of that is the industrialization of healthcare. What kind of research do we need? Dr. Montori says the system prioritizes industrial efficiency as much as actual care, rewarding providers for volume as much as quality. As people get processed through, they become a bit of a blur. We don't see them in all their biology and, and their, their backstory. Our response then is to their common characteristics. So we, here, here's the treatment that we give people with diabetes. Here's the treatment that we give people with hypertension. And the job is not to care for people like you, the, the job is to care for you. And he says you, the patient, are often far less savvy than Liel Pink and her parents in navigating the system. He says the costliest outcomes are borne by the neediest patients and under-resourced providers. It creates a lot of work for people that might even leave their care, stop taking their medicine, stop showing up for appointments because it's just not designed for them. We had patients who were escaping the care that we wanted to give. Dr. Mark Linzer is one of 100 so-called 
Patient Revolution Fellows across the world in 2010 when he joined Hennepin Healthcare, a Minneapolis system that serves some of the city's most marginalized people. Linzer says there was high staff turnover and for patients, long wait times for, at best, incomplete care. They were in the emergency room once or twice a week. They were hospitalized every month, year in, year out. And we wanted a better way for them. Everything seems like stimulus response. Today, that better way is in full swing in the form of what's called the Coordinated Care Clinic, bringing together expertise to treat the whole patient, not just the immediate medical need. We move on and talk about Lyle. Doctors, social workers, psychologists, chemical dependency specialists, and others meet regularly. They're also on speed dial with housing or finance officials if needed. Lyle, how have you been since I last saw you? Lyle Thibodeau first came seeking treatment for alcohol abuse. I had six family members pass on me. I had a really good friend get killed. And that's one of the things that drove me the drink. He's been sober for six years and loves his job as a restaurant server. The clinic staff, he says, has become like a second family. They're by my side all the time. I've had a headache though for months now. Yeah. <laughs> I am that. a headache. <laughs> Betsy Lidster's medical challenges have been complicated by homelessness and addiction problems that date back three decades to opioids she was prescribed after a severe car accident. Do you feel like you're less restless? The clinic has been a one-stop shop to help stabilize her life. It helped her find shelter for a start. Tell me when you're like sure you can see it. And the team keeps regular tabs on her, in and out of clinic appointments like this one with Dr. Brian Grant. <laughs> Dr. Graham has been incredible. He keeps me laughing. The social worker here calls me once every two weeks to check in on me. The results? Hospitalization and emergency room use by coordinated care clinic patients have declined significantly, saving this public safety net health system tens of millions of dollars over the years. And early job satisfaction surveys show marked improvement. I probably spend more time per patient outside of clinic hours in this clinic than any other clinic I've ever been in. It's not just producing healthcare, but it's trying to produce health. And I think it's that health production that I feel, it's a, it's a big value for me. It's one small example of many attempts to produce health with unhurried holistic care, says the Patient Revolution's Dr. Montori. But he's realistic about how quickly change can come in a complex healthcare system, an industry, as he puts it, that accounts for about a fifth of the United States' gross domestic product. It will be almost like um, building a cathedral, you know, lay out the first, uh, the first set of stones. And perhaps they never get to see the full thing build up, but they hope that when anybody, anywhere in the world becomes sick and goes to the healthcare system, that their response will be careful and that will be kind. It's a good thing I think we're trying to pick up where she would have taken this fight to fix health care because that was her passion. I am now in a wheelchair with my mother pushing me. Tamar Fenton and David Pink say they are committed to changing the rules for patients like their daughter. She wrote toward the end, children aren't supposed to die before their parents, but then I was never one to follow the rules. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Fred DeSam Lazaro in St. Louis Park, Minnesota. Fred's reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota.